Assalamualaikum and hello everyone Hi, we are back in our second video about water footprint ISO 14046 So, for the second video, we are going to share with you guys 4 content Which are number 1 is introduction Second is water footprint assessment and scope Third is terms and definition And number 4 is principles So what are you waiting for? Let's start! Oh wait! Before that, let's recap first what we have shared with you guys on our first video. Do you guys remember what is water footprint? Water footprint is measures the amount of water used to produce each of the goods and services we use. We also talk about water use direct and indirect way. Do you guys remember water footprint components? Yes, there are three water footprint components which are blue refers to consumption of surface water resources and groundwater throughout the production change of a product. Example, irrigated agriculture, industry, and domestic water. Next is green water footprint, where refers to consumption of water contained in plants and soil in the form of moisture. Example, relevant for agricultural, horticultural, and forestry products. Last but not least, grey water footprint where refers to the pollution of water resources. Example, considers point source pollution discharge to a fresh water resources. Without further ado, let's start first with introduction. The issue of water management becomes serious to the global debate on sustainable development. Water footprint assessment is the techniques being developed to improve water management at local, regional, national and global levels. International standard is expected to ensure consistency in assessing and reporting water footprint of products, processes, or organizations. Okay, let's continue on second video agenda about water footprint assessment. According to the international standard, there are six elements that will gonna be highlighted. First, based on a life cycle assessment, which are ISO 14044. Second, about modular. Third, Identities potential environmental impacts related to water. Fourth, relevant geographical and temporal dimensions. Fifth, quantity of water use and changes in water quality. And sixth, utilize hydrological knowledge. As everyone can see here, there are six points about water footprint assessment assist. Number one, assessing the magnitude of potential environmental impacts related to water. Number two, Identifying opportunities to reduce water-related potential environmental impacts. Number three, strategic risk management related to water. Number four, facilitating water efficiency and optimization of water management of product, process, and organizational level. Number five, informing decision makers in industry, government, or non-governmental organizations of their potential environmental impacts related to water. And number six. Providing consistent and reliable information which are based on scientific evidence for reporting water footprint results. Okay, now let's move on to scope. There are four scope that will be covered on. First, international standard specific about the principles, requirement, and guidelines related to water footprint assessment of product, process, and organization based on life cycle assessment, also known as LCA. Next, international standard also provides principle, requirement, and guidelines for conducting and reporting. Followed by only air and soil emissions that impact water quality included in the assessment and not all air and soil emissions are included. Last but not least, the results of water footprint assessment is single value or a profile of impact indicator results. Okay now, let's jump to 3.1, terms relating to types and classification water. Type 1 is fresh water, where low concentration of dissolved solid less than 1000 mg per liter and acceptable for drinking after treatment. Second, surface water, rivers and lakes exclude seawater. Third, brackish water, low concentration dissolved solids less than seawater. Acid can form municipal, domestic, irrigation, and brackish water is about 1000 mg per liter to 30,000 mg per liter. Next is seawater. Seawater is sea and ocean. Concentration dissolved solid more than or equal to 30,000 mg per liter. Followed by groundwater, where underground formation. And types number 6 is fossil water, 
Groundwater application by human. Type 7 is water body, who have characteristic based geographical, equipped biological, physical and chemical. The examples are rivers, lakes, glaciers, groundwaters, seas, icebergs and reservoirs. Next is drainage basin, where run off surface from precipitation drains into water body, act as watershed such as drainage area, catchment area and river basin. And lastly, elementary water flow were drawn from environment to be studied, such as water cycle. Okay now, let's move on to terms relating water 3.2. There are four things that we gonna share with you guys. Number one, water use. It is by human activity. It relates to drainage basin. It gives impact to water quality. It's related with water consumption, such as evaporation, transpiration, Integration of product. Water consumption refers to evaporation defined as a release to different drainage or sea. Second is water withdrawal. It is anthropogenic removal of water from water body. It is also known as water abstraction. Third, water degradation. It is negative, they change water quality. And last but not least, water quality. Based on physical, chemical, biological water characteristic suitable use for human and ecosystem. Is everyone okay so far? Is everyone still with me? Okay, that's good. Because now we are on 3.3, terms relating to life cycle assessment and water footprint assessment. There are a lot of things that are going to be touched in this section. First is water footprint. Water footprint is a matrix that quantifies the potential environmental impacts related to water. As example, water scarcity footprint. Second, water footprint assessment. It is a compilation and evaluation of the inputs, outputs, and the potential environmental impacts related to water use or affected by a product, process, or organization. Third, is comprehensive water footprint assessment. It is to consider all environmentally relevant attributes or aspects of natural environment, human health, and resources related to water, including water availability and water degradation. Fourth, life cycle. It is stages of a product system, and from raw material acquisition or generation from natural resources to final disposal. Next is life cycle assessment, also known as LCA. LCA is evaluation the inputs, outputs, and potential impacts based on life cycle. Followed by life cycle inventory analysis, also known as LCI. It is phase of life cycle product on inputs and outputs. In 3.3, also touch about water footprint inventory analysis. It is inputs and outputs related to water for products, processes, or organizations as stated in the goal and scope definition phase. It is also a potential impact to water. 3.3 also touch about system boundary, where set criteria specific for part of product system or activities and organization. Furthermore, it's a cut-off criteria. It is excluded specific amount material, energy flow, or level environmental significance. Next is water footprint impact assessment. It is significant for environmental impacts to water of a product, process, or organization. Followed by impact category, it is life cycle inventory analysis as represent the environmental issues. Also touch about impact category indicator, it is quantifiable representation of an impact category. Besides that, 3.3 also consists of water footprint profile. It is complication of impact category indicator to address potential environmental impacts towards water. It is consists of two things. First, is comprehensive, where water footprint profile. And second, not comprehensive, where it is needs with qualifier. Is categorization factor. It is a factor derived from a characterization model which is applied to convert and assign life cycle inventory analysis result to the common unit of the category indicator. Followed by environmental mechanism, it is a system of physical, chemical, and biological process for a given impact category linking the life cycle inventory analysis result to category indicators and category endpoints. Water availability. 
availability of water resources for humans and ecosystem to fulfill their needed. It is depending on location and timing. But then, quality of water cannot fulfill user needed. It is also included for land water management forestry, agriculture, conservation of wetlands, and hydropower where can modify water availability, recharging groundwater. However, water scarcity if a water availability just consider quantity instead of quality. And last but not least, for 3.3 is water scarcity. It is demand for water compares to the replenishment of water in an area. An example can be given is a drainage basin without taking into account the water quality. Okay now, let's continue with 3.4, terms relating to interpretation and reporting of water footprint result. There are two things that will be covered on. First, comparative assertion. It is an environmental claim regarding the superiority, equivalence of one product versus a competing product that performs the same function. Second, interested party, person or organization that can affect, affected by, or perceive themselves to be affected by the results of a water footprint assessment. Now, we have reached to 3.5. Terms relating to products, product systems, processes, and organizations. There are 13 things that we're gonna be highlighted in this section. Number one, product. It is goods or services such as software, hardware, process material, and agriculture product. Number two, core product. Any of two or more products coming from the same unit processes or product system. Number three, waste, and objects which the holder intends or is required to dispose of. Number four, product system. It is collection of unit processes with product flows performing defined functions and which models the life cycle of a product. Number five, functional unit. Quantified performance of product system, process, or organization for use as a reference unit. Number six, reference flow, measure of an output from processes to fulfill the function expressed by the functional unit. Number seven, product category, group of products that can fulfill equivalent functions. Number eight, product category rules, rules, requirements, and guidelines for developing type three environmental declarations. Number nine, organization. Person or group of people with responsibilities, authorities, and relationships to achieve its objectives. Number 10. Facility. Set of installations which can be defined within a single geographical boundary, organizational unit, or production process. 11. Water footprint inventory. Result of a water footprint inventory analysis, including elementary flows which are usable for subsequent water footprint impact assessment. 12. Direct water footprint inventory. Considering inputs and outputs resulting from activities within the established organizational boundaries. 13. Indirect water footprint inventory. Considering inputs and outputs which are consequences of an organization's activities. Now, let's proceed with 3.6, terms relating to data and data quality. There are three things that consist in 3.6. First, primary data, quantify value of a unit process obtained from a direct measurement or a calculation based on direct measurements at its original source. Second, secondary data, data obtained from sources other than a direct measurement or a calculation based on direct measurements at the original source. And third, uncertainty analysis, quantify the uncertainty introduced in the results of a life cycle inventory analysis due to the cumulative effects of model imprecisions, input uncertainty, or data variability. Let's continue with principle conducting water footprint assessment. Fundamental and use as guidance for decision on planning, conducting, and reporting of water footprint assessment. According to international standard, water footprint assessment may be conducted and reported as standalone assessment or 
as a part of a life cycle assessment. Should be comprehensive and consider all relevant aspects relating to natural environment, human health, and resources. On principle, let's start first with life cycle perspective, where the shifting of potential environmental burden between life cycle stage and individual process can be identified and possibly avoided. Next, environmental focus, where assesses potential environmental impact related to water associated and water footprint assessment combined with other tools for more extensive and complementary assessment. Third, relative approach and functional units were related to functional unit and results calculated relative to this functional unit. Fourth, literative approach where individual phases of water footprint assessment use result of other phases. Followed by transparency where sufficient and appropriate information is disclosed to allow users of water footprint assessment make decisions with reasonable confidence. Six, relevance, where data and methods selected that they appropriate to the water footprint assessment. Completeness, where all significant data will include in the inventory. Consistency, where assumptions, methods and data are applied in the same way. Accuracy, where bias and uncertainties are reduced as far as it practicable. Besides that, also consists of priority of scientific approach, where decisions are preferably based on natural science. Geographical relevance also count in, where conducted at a scale and resolution which give relevance results according to the goal and scope of the study. And last but not least, comprehensiveness, where considers all environmentally aspects of natural environment, human health, and resources to water. Wow, we are almost end of our second video. But wait, let's recap first about ISO 14046. We have talked about water footprint assessment just now, right? So, water footprint assessment is a compilation and evaluation of the inputs, outputs, and the potential environmental impacts related to water use or affected by a product, process, or organization. Next is life cycle assessment, or also known as LCA. LCA is a compilation and evaluation of the inputs, outputs, and the potential environmental impacts of a product system throughout its life cycle. Now, let's mention one by one principle that consists in ISO 14046. We got life cycle perspective, environment focus, relative approach and functional unit, literative approach, transparency, relevant, completeness, consistency, accuracy, priority of scientific approach, geographical relevance, and comprehensiveness. That's all for our sharing session in second video. But wait, do you want to know about the method for water footprint assessment? Really? You do? Okay, if yes, stay tuned for our next video. Bye!